I'm with Luke Bouchard of Bouchard Perle Fields. And uh, Luke, you handle a lot of the export business for the company. Uh, what are some of the exciting challenges you've faced trying to export your product into Asia? Uh, you know, to explain first, you know, it's good because in Asia there's a lot of more and more wine collectors. Uh, perhaps people are more board oriented, but uh, we need but we're going to fix that. But definitely, <laughs> need good ambassador and the right ambassador at the right time. So. Uh, but uh, when people start to taste our wine, they really enjoy it, and usually they remain at the Burgundy, uh, as they re remain Burgundy aficionados. And how do you, because Burgundy is quite complicated to explain to the world, so how do you make it simple? How do you help people that are brand new to Burgundy understand Burgundy? Perhaps you can advise me with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what, when you say it's complicated, actually it's very simple, as you know. Uh, one grape variety for white Chardonnay, one grape variety for red Pinot Noir, and all differences, uh, obviously, it doesn't come from the grape variety, it comes from the terroir, different kind of soil. So we just, we, we just would like to say, okay, Burgundy perhaps looks completely from outside, but just start tasting and just enjoy the wine, enjoy the products. It's not, not complicated, just taste, that's the most important thing. Sometimes what is difficult to understand for people uh, Burgundy is that they know like the, the, the name, they don't understand that the signature is as important as the name of the wine. When you have Gevray Chambertin or Pomar, you know, there are hundred differences of Pomar, hundred differences of Gevray Chambertin. They all taste different and people need to trust a good name. And that's something perhaps different than in Bordeaux, as you know, where you have one chateau and marked by different negotiations. <laughs> so it's another point that we need to explain mm. and that people need to recognize which producer they buy from. So maybe it's a good idea to pick one district and then try all the producers from Definitely. the district yeah. and then pick your favorites and stick with them. Exactly. And yeah. then go on to the next district. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then every vintage is changing, so it's never boring. No. <laughs> now, how many appellations are you working with in the Bouchard portfolio? So Bouchard, we are lucky because we have a uh, nice collection of uh, Grand Cru and Premier Cru and 70% of our estate is designated Grand Cru or Premier Cru. So we want some on the Grand Cru, White, Montrachet, Corton Charlemagne. Uh, we have on the right side, Tour Rougeau, Bonnemar et Chauzeau. Uh, and on Premier Cru, nice collection of Meursault Premier Cru. Uh, nice collection of Bonne Premier Cru, Enfant Jésus, Monopole, mm. a few Monopoles, like mm. Enfant Jésus, Claude de la Mousse. And some we also come Corton as red, uh, Pomar, New uh, Saint So together we have more than uh, uh, 80 different appellations from our own estate. So you know, it's a mosaic, it's a collection of terroirs. So do you lay it at night, memorizing all of those, all those appellations? Oh, uh, yes, we memorize, but uh, that's, that's not too difficult. What is uh, what is important that you know again every vintage is so different that it's, it's never boring as well. Uh -huh. Uh, but it's what we like, you know, collecting some nice parcels. If you are not owner in the right places in Burgundy, if you don't own Montrachet, mm. if you don't own Gautel Charlemagne, forget mm. it, then it, there is mm. no wines or no grapes to purchase. So it's very important to collect. I don't own, so I have to forget it. The only thing I can do is buy the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Just you. you. You're welcome. <laughs>